Alright, so I'm back again. This time this is a lens review, but um, for people that are new or haven't seen my um, first video of my newest short film, um, well, second newest short film, then you don't know that this channel is kind of changed, morphed, we'll say. And I still make comedic sketches and skits, but more so in the shape of one minute short films. And that's just where we're going because uh, now I'm more of a filmmaker and photographer and that's just my passion um, and the thing that I love to do. So yeah, that's why this has changed. So I hope you guys enjoy that. But um, yeah, so that brings us to today's topic, the Sigma 30 millimeter F1.4. So this is the lens made for the APS-C size sensors for cameras. You can put it on a full frame, but it's meant for the APS-C size because it's meant for the crop factor of that. And we're gonna list the pros first and then the cons of the lens. The first pro of this lens is it is amazingly sharp. Um, compared to the kit lens, the 16 to 55 millimeter, I don't know, 16 to 50 millimeter um, kit lens, it is miles better than it um, on every level. Um, right now, I'll throw up some um, shots that you guys can see. But yeah, it is amazingly sharp. And the kit lens isn't bad. It It's lasted me for over a year and you know when i didn't have any other lens it's and I, I still use it too it's a good it's a decent zoom lens it's just that the sigma is so much sharper because it's a prime lens and because it's not a kit lens um it is is more expensive but it is worth it in every way the next pro is the f1.4 factor to this lens is the fact that it lets in so much light at f1.4 and the shallow depth of field is amazing. I have it on my camera right now, the A6000, and you could really see the separation in the background to me. And once again, I'll throw up some more shots so you guys can see the creamy depth of field that you get with this lens. I, like, on this lens, I think that you get a 5.6, um, and that's the best for this one. Um, don't quote me on that. Um, but it is still good. It's just 1.4. You could do so much. Like I've been able to do night photography and I've been able to do night photography and get long exposure shots. That I've never been able to do with the kit lens. This lens is just so much better at taking things, uh, at night and getting that amazing separation. And the last pro is the autofocus. Now it's not the best autofocus because it's not a native Sony lens, but it's pretty damn close. I'm gonna show you an example right now of me coming into frame and me leaving frame and then me putting something in front of the frame and taking it away and just see the speed of how accurate it is and how good it is at catching things that are supposed to be in the foreground. Now for the cons. The first con of this lens is that it is a prime lens and prime lenses are typically way sharper than any other lens out there, but it can't zoom. If you have to shoot, you literally have to move up to it, which I'll admit that I don't really mind too much because it makes me be more creative. It makes me actually move as a photographer, um, but it just doesn't zoom. This zooms. So if I ever need to zoom, if I'm taking like a photography shot of a forest and I want to get really up close in there I'll probably use this more often this one if it's over like a hill I'm not crossing it the next con is that this lens has no stabilization whatsoever because it's not native to the Sony email and for me this is a problem I'm a budget filmmaker so for everything that I get I need it to work hundred percent of the time because I don't have money to buy all these crazy lenses and I do have a glide cam that does definitely take away a lot of those micro jitters but it's not perfect. I want the buttery smooth transitions as if it did have stabilization in the lens, but if I'm on a tripod and if I had the glide cam, it doesn't matter too, too much, like I said, but I would like to have that next step of stabilization. And the next con is a problem that I don't have at all, 
um, but I have seen a lot of people complain about it, so I just wanna bring it up to see if you might have that problem, if that is a big deal breaker for you. Um, but it is a bigger lens. It's not as long as I thought it would be, but it is bigger and it is a lot heavier than, let's say, the kit lens. The kit lens is a pancake lens, it's relatively light, but this lens is a lot heavier. So if you're a photographer and you're out there, long days and you're just shooting constantly, just going at it, um, doing your thing, but eventually your wrist might get sore if you're one of those people like that. I'm not knocking you. It doesn't happen to me really, but I have heard problems of that happening to people and if that is a problem, I just want you to know that, yes, I can see it happening, I guess. So all in all, the Sigma 30mm f1.4 is an amazing lens. Uh, you can catch this for about like $300, but if you get it used or if you get it, you know, refurbished or anything like that, I have seen it drop to like 250 In one case, I saw it like drop to like 230 But once again, I don't know if you trust buying used or you want to buy it from, that's all on you. I, hey, to each his own. I'll leave the link for the lens in the description down below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'm gonna do more videos like this. Um, if you guys wanna know what my camera gear is, what's in my camera bag, um, why I love doing short films, what my favorite short films are, then just comment down below. And I hope you guys have a great day. Peace. Come on, man. Hey, that airplane crazy, man. Come on, stop it. You guys hear that? So all in all, the Sigma 30 millimeter. The next con is the next con is that this lens Excuse has. Excuse me, boss. You Come have on. A text